Hello, a very good evening, and welcome to Frequency Radio on this Sunday evening for a new show Davis. called Eggle Olsen's Wellies. I'm Mark Davis, and I'm joined in the studio by Michael Platt, Frank, Bonjour. and a chap named Brad the Goldie. <laughs> Goldie? Goldie. <laughs> Brad the goalkeeper. So how are we, gents? Absolutely fantastic, man. So just to give the listeners at home a bit of an insight into what we're going to be doing here every Sunday, or every time we can actually... Uh, be asked. Be asked. <laughs> um, Eggle Olsen's Welly- Wellies is a, is a show that's really been born under the influence of alcohol, I'd say, uh, amongst other things, on random nights out when uh, our, so. our good friend Michael comes to visit us in Preston because he has no <laughs> job all life. Uh, <laughs> We're going to be watching an episode of the Premier League years and then we're going to be sort of going back through and uh, talking about when, when football was a real game. And we've decided that the opening season is the 2001-2002 uh, campaign when Arsenal were the champions. And this was the season that Ipswich, Derby County and Leicester were relegated. Now, we do have a bit of a problem in the room. Uh, we have three Liverpoolian, uh, Liverpool fans, I should say, and one West Brom fan. Yeah, get that right, you will. Yeah, they put the, the year when we're not in it. So, totally so we've, we have started with a year where uh, West Brom weren't actually in the Premier League. Oh, and when Liverpool were slightly good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I wouldn't know about that. No bias there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of the big problems also uh, with, with this show is... Um, we're, we're, we're living in the past because we, we can't bear to talk about uh, the, the future with the... Uh, with Brendan Rodgers at the I've helm. Told you what the, I've told you what the future is, mate. Last time we were in crisis, this very season, who did we turn to? The Kirby kid, Phil Thompson. That's what we need to do this season. You want Tomo back, do you? Yeah. See you later, Brendan. All right. <laughs> Bring well, back Concord. Well, you heard it here first. But uh, a bit of a, just a bit, just a general opening question to everybody in the room now. Do you all remember the year, or am I the only one who actually remembers the year? No, I, remember. I fully remember the year. I remember year. West Brom. I, I think I went to my first away game that year, or first... Was that Galatasaray away, or was it? <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Frank's Derby fantasy County, story. It was Derby County away. And um, what was the score? One all, I think. Can't remember. No, I can't think it was one all. Nice, nice memories there. What about, what about you, Brad? Because obviously, how old are you at the time? About eight? Yeah. Eight I, years I, old? I, I, I was season to get older at West Brom that year, so... Uh, I remember that's. I remember West Brom seasons quite well, especially with Bob Taylor doing his thing up front. Yeah, Bob Taylor scored the winner to get us against Crystal Palace on the final Fantastic. day. We got a lot of time for that because we overturned a uh, twelve-point lead. Wolves had they were second, we were third. We overturned it. Well, West Brom is something that we'll get onto later in this show, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> maybe towards the very end of the show when we stop recording. <laughs> I was. Uh, I was more interested in what. A, what was it like being a kid, and. No, did you watch the Premier League as intensely as you would have if West Brom were in it, or were you were you more just watching West Brom and nobody else? Well, uh, I don't really remember it, but uh, obviously because I was eight. But uh, I remember looking at it, obviously taking a keen interest because I was interested in football. But uh, nothing really stands out that much. No, well, we're going to get started. And um, I was I was told by uh, Mr. Platt across the way from me that he'd had uh, he'd been writing a lot of notes on the early part of the season. Well, mainly just about Arsenal. About Arsenal. Yeah. Well, I mean, what a season you it was said that Arsenal. Arsenal won the league, but how they did so after the summer of signing Francis Jeffers, Richard Wright, and Janichi Inamoto is beyond me because that surely <laughs> can't go down as the worst transfer window there's ever, ever been. Three future, well, no, sorry, two future Everton flops. Was that the year that. Oh, sorry, what am I talking about? Francis Jeffers came from Everton, chatting out my house. He did, go, me, he, Dave. he did go back, though, didn't he? He scored like one in about 20, didn't he? But Before he went on to Rangers. It wasn't so much of who they signed, but it was who they had in their team, and it was the season that Thierry Henry finished top of the goal-scoring charts with 24 goals, which actually I was surprised by because Ruud van Nistelrooy won the Player of the Year that season, and that was obviously the year that he came from PSV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he'd done his knee at the medical season before, hadn't he? Yeah, That's they it, wanted yeah. to sign him before. And, and I, I, well, I, what I remember about his first ever game, I think it was Celtic in a pre-season friendly, and they won like 4-2 on you know like Sky Show friendlies. And uh, he said it was really important that they picked up the three points in a, in a pre-season <laughs> friendly. And I think it might have been Dennis Irwin's testimonial, but I'm not too sure. But um, We no, tonked s- them in the Charity Shield as well, first game of that season. We did. Gary McAllister's penalty. Gary Mack, yeah. And um, I believe that was Sander Vestervel's last good performance for Liverpool before... Uh, Thank God he left this season. I know. In fact, I've got a funny story about him leaving. We were in the caravan in your own Wales. Really? Um, yeah. The, the, well, it was the, uh, my birthday when uh, Bolton turned us over and Dean Holdsworth scored from about 25 yards um, with a P-roller. 
I when remember, when um, under Big Sander. That was on Own Girls and Gaffs. Well, that wasn't that it? Doesn't yeah. <laughs> so is your, it. So is your birthday the 27th, the 27th of August? The 27th of August, 1992. I should not know that. Yeah, and um, yeah, you really shouldn't. That is quite weird that you remember the date of that game. Uh, there's a personal reason for it. So we were in the caravan with my brother. My brother used to make a habit of lying to me about football, wrestling, anything that I was interested in. And when we signed Jersey Dudek, he told me that he made Fabian Barthez look positively you know, normal. He said that Jersey Dudek would dribble out of his goal, <laughs> take players on. I've never been more excited for a signing in my life. And needless to say, I was very disappointed. But um, well, He was a good goalkeeper, but he didn't dribble out of his box like a sweeper. No, but we, upset. we all remember the miracle of Istanbul and what Dudek did for Liverpool years later. I think me and Frank Moore remember him for our uh, meeting and conversation with him in Aloha in Liverpool. <coughs> I was fun. Frank, you've been very quiet so far. I'm munching away in your crisps. Have you got anything to add? I'm still hungover. Right, well, good. <laughs> no, one of my favourite things this t- this season is uh, the prolific Michael Ricketts Bolton. <laughs> like, the uh, first thing I saw was like straight away is like him scoring like two goals in the pay- uh, he beat Leicester four 0 He's got two goals straight away. It's like, yeah, they what were they started like, brilliantly mm-hmm. this season and, and with uh, big big Sam's yeah. awesome facial yeah, hair, absolutely fantastic moustache. Uh, Sam, Sam Allardyce, I've made a note here. He had a very similar moustache to my dad. He's right, it. Mr. Poole. It's a porno moustache, that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, thing about, the thing about Sam Allardyce's uh, moustache, for the people listening at home, or maybe the parents listening at home, <laughs> more likely, was that it was originally going to be the name for this podcast, but our distinguished host vetoed it due to his hatred of big Samuel. My yeah. dad would have turned off by now after the hatred for his moustache. <laughs> he used to get stopped at uh, air style things because he looked like a terrorist. Well, Jesus. Well, Poor if we could man. just... Uh, so, if we go back to uh, August the 18th, 2001, it was the opening day of the season. We haven't talked about the Charity Shield yet, Dave. Oh, all right, I thought it was... Oh. When, when Yap Stam yep. fell over on running Michael Owen. Was this the season he won European Player of the Year? It was. I was there when he got the Ballon d'Or. So was I. Was that who was that against? Derby. We relegated them. Uh, I was at that. He scored twice. I was at that. We did promise that this wasn't going to be a Liverpool hour. So that's a great the, point. To the thousands at home, we will make sure that uh, we've we've already talked about the Champions League. I don't know how you fit that <laughs> in in the wrong season. Listen, and, uh, <laughs> this is the day we've just got beat three one by Palace. We need to find our happiness somewhere, Bradley. But you you did mention Yapstam, and actually it was uh, only a matter of. Days later, or certainly weeks, when yeah, he, went to Lazio, he, he left, and uh, in a move that Ferguson called one of his biggest regrets uh, in his Man United career, and replaced by none other than Laurent Blanc, <laughs> who, uh, yeah. who the only thing he did that impressed me was uh, tuck the top of his socks. Into I was his, just uh, about to say, I do, I do like a continental footballer who comes <laughs> in and he does things differently. And Laurent Blanc seemed to bring in a fantastic pair of Diodora boots, tucked in socks, and the ability to play the game at walking pace, which is now I, what have I have based my own game on. <laughs> yes, well, there's a, I think that's where the similarity ends with uh, <laughs> Michael Platt and Laurent Blanc. But what have you got from early on in the season? I seem to remember Liverpool started with a home game against West Ham United. Michael Owen scored an absolute world. If you remember, he cut inside, went back outside and put it in the bottom corner. That was Michael Owen in his prime. Now, I'm a little bit younger than you, and you always talk about the love of your life, Roberto Fowler. Which we will unfortunately we have to come <laughs> on to on the worst moment of my life. But for me, and it is a sad thing to say, Michael Owen was always my idol as a child. I once signed my name in school. I put my name on my work and wrote Michael Owen accidentally. I was thinking about Michael Owen. And my name is, of course, Michael Platt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was the wrong thing to write. But my note, my note started this season. The first thing I wrote was, Gary Doherty sent off for spares. Now, not a particularly pivotal moment of the season, but... I rue the demise of a striker who can play centre back. I was just about to say, why deserved, doesn't that happen anymore? He deserved to be put sent off. For Kiriakos like, was the last great one. Christopher, uh, uh, Christopher uh, Sam was done yeah. it. Under Roy Hodgson, Kiriakos had a great goal. Steve already. Watson, he's got a hat trick for Gerard PK used to do he it. Used to play for us. Did he? It was terrible. What about oh. Robert Hooth? Robert, dude, did he do it for was at Chelsea? Yeah, they used to whack him up Hooth time. Robert Hooth, Robert, Robert Hooth, 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 Hooth was the cause I, I, I of one of my favourite interviews ever when, when <laughs> Claudio Ranieri was forced to play a centre back pairing of Robert Hooth and Joe Keenan, and he said, Robert Hooth, central back. He was fantastic. <laughs> Great moment. <laughs> what? <is> what? <laughs> I think it's going to be a long hour trying to get through this season. We haven't even got through the first game. Do, do you want my first n- note? I do want your notes, yes. Juan Veron. Same earring as my dad. 
Are we just going to compare every footballer <laughs> to Bradley Poole's dad? <laughs> yeah, if you shout out, shout out at home, Mr. Poole. Your dad must look really strange with, with like a Charlie Nicholas earring. <laughs> Charlie and a big, Nicholas and a big Sam mustache. <laughs> oh, he's changed that now, but uh. I thought I thought it'd be interesting because um, obviously I did have a look at the Premier League years after uh, the debacle that was Sellers Park this afternoon. <laughs> but I have watched the Premier League years this afternoon, and it was it was a five horse race for the Premier League, and uh, Leeds were fantastic. Yeah, really. Leeds United, who sacked David O'Leary weeks after this season had ended. Obviously, thinking they were going on to bigger and better things. This it? is the Leeds team that I think about. When people like, I really do wish Leeds would come back up. Just because everyone likes the Premiership teams that, you know, when they were children, what they remember. I'd love it if Wimbledon, Forest, Chef Wed, Leeds were all back up. Like, get rid of these. Get rid of these flash yeah, bands teams like, like West Brom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think he's these yo-yo <laughs> teams. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Leeds were absolutely phenomenal this season. On the first game of the season, or you know, early on in August, I'll always, always remember they played Arsenal and Ashley Cole was on the floor. Danny Mills thought he died, so he just ran over and booted the ball. I don't find it on the floor. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Danny Mills, what an absolute. Gobshite. I've just got the uh, simple note of Danny Mills hates Arsenal. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah, I think it does, yeah. But um, it's, it was actually one of the biggest talking points of the season, and we said we weren't going to last too long on Liverpool, but uh, this was the year that Gerard <coughs> Houllier uh, suffered his heart attack uh, in a home fixture against Leeds United, actually, and I think yeah. it was October 2001. Uh, in a 1-1 one, one draw. I seem to remember Robbie Fowler hitting the bar p- uh, prior to Murphy heading Danny in. Murphy heading m- in, More yeah. than uh, Julier's actual heart attack that day. But, of course, that was a that was at a time when he seemed to be getting everything right. And if you compare if you compare teams to these days at the top of the Premier League, Liverpool finish second and they you know they decide to revamp their old squad. They get rid of Luis Suarez. This was a coming off a season when we just won the treble. We made one summer signing, John Arnorisa. What a man. From Monaco. From Monaco, yeah. Do you think that's that was partly, you know, a, a reason that Liverpool fared so well this season? Because it was continuity because yeah, of the absolutely. whole team. And plus what you've got to remember is we had a lot of young players who seemingly came into their own that season. I mean, Carragher, really, he was playing left back, wasn't he? In probably the best defence we've ever had alongside Big Sarri. Stefan Honcho and Marcus Babel. Yeah, well, this is the season that there Babel was, got his there, Gillian Bear syndrome. There, there, was su- there was such like a fine balance of just like, uh, yeah, uh, there was bits of it from the score. You know, you had like Littman, who was at the, the end of his career, and he was, you know, was, he was t- oh, clearly there just to help a lot of the young players. But you had Gerard Murphy well. coming through. Exactly. Two phenomenal, phenomenal, you, you had, phenomenal you had football. Macall- you had McAllister as well. You had such a good, like, yeah. balance of the older, experienced players who wouldn't obviously play 90 minutes every week, and then the younger players who put more of a shift in. And it was just like, it all sort of came together, just not quite to the fullest extent. No, but unfortunately, as uh, as as the narrative tends to go with Liverpool and Premier League campaigns, yet again, we did not win the league. And that was to Arsenal. No. And I've got to say, what a team. It was some team, wasn't it? What a team. The best Premiership team I think I've seen. Apart, that one. apart from Chelsea right now. Well, they do look good. I think but, Ch- Chelsea I mean, right now are getting 100 points this season. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. But I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Robert Perez. You have seen me. You have seen me run around the club doing the Robert Tiller, Robert Perez <laughs> celebration, Dave. So you know, I, I've got a lot of time for that. Man. I I'm thought you were just pointing I, at women you wanted to get with. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick Lundberg as well. What a player! I was going to bring up Youngberg, and it was uh, it was the season that he had a red streak going through his hair. And I don't know about <coughs> your um, your upbringings, but in Cricket Port Madoway, there was a. Uh, an influx of red stripes down the centre of heads at that time. Did that ever cross your path? Yes. <laughs> wow. I had similar. Did you have the Yumberg? No, I had a pool creation. It was a shaved head apart from a spiral, a blonde spiral around my head. What are you? Loved it. Did it? Uh, aye. Now, this will come as a shock to all the listeners who happen to be friends of mine who will be disgusted at this admission. I feel like I'm coming out. But I did, <laughs> I did, going on holiday, ask for a David Beckham stripe to be shaved <laughs> into my head here. Did you? I really oh did. Oh dear. I know, I know. Did you get it? I did. Is there a picture? Um, probably somewhere. My dad thought it was ridiculous, and we went into Chris, Chris's barber's in Fazakli, asked for it, and got laughed at. The, the, woman, the woman in there did it for me, and then my mum proceeded to put sun cream up the stripe <laughs> every day we were on holiday. I've re- never regretted anything more in my life. 
No. And I'm going to get slaughtered for this. Well, we are in the process of setting up a... Because uh, this is the pilot show, so be- you've got to bear with us uh, for this particular podcast just in case things go wrong. But we are setting up a Twitter page as well, which is going to be... Eggles Wellies. At Eggles Wellies. So as soon as uh, Michael shows us uh, photographic evidence of this David Beckham hairstyle, we'll be sure to <laughs> post it up and retweet it and favourite it <laughs> at your pleasure. Frank, you've been very quiet. What was the standout performer for you that season? Michael Ricketts again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michael Ricketts, he, he's, he's Frank's idol. He's not. I, re- I, I don't like him. Although, um, he's, at least he's not Martin O'Neill level of hatred for you, mate. My standout performer was probably... What was the Leeds man? Uh, the Leicester manager called. He looked really shady, man. He looked Dave, re- Dave, Bassett. Dave Bassett. Dave Bassett. Dave, Dave Bassett was my like, the, not the stand before. It was the standout thing about that season. I always, I always thought Dave Bassett looked like dirty den off EastEnders. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, I, it was when I was watching it the other day and saw Dave Bassett again for the first time. I think Mike's in the room. I think I, I just started <laughs> pissing myself laughing at Dave Bassett. Will he ever? He's, he's such a shady looking fella. He just looked. <laughs> he just looked like he sold like stolen phones out of his coat, like yeah, outside like the a ground. Car dealer. Yeah. He looked like he was just going to try and rip you off with some insurance scam. Was that his? Was that, was that his last job? I can't think of him doing anything else. Because I remember, I'm sure he used to be at like Sheffield United back in the day, didn't he? Like in the early '90s and stuff like that. Because mm. he was, he was a sort of, he was a sort of. It was like a poor team. man's Harry Redknapp. It was like a crap team journeyman, <laughs> which says a lot, really. A poor man's Harry Redknapp. Yeah, I know. But um, yeah, we'll move on and uh, to the month of September. Bit not that we touched much on on August. <laughs> and um, well, my first note. Yes, for September was Quinton Fortune. I now, know. Yeah, the South African journey. It was not journey. That's the wrong word. Utility man for Manchester United, who was seemingly on the brink of breaking into that team for years. He was. He was Roy, Roy, Ryan Giggs' understudy for so <laughs> long. So, like young Ben Foster exactly, as well. A few years exactly, later, exactly. He's like like Richie Partridge. He was always on the verge of breaking into the Liverpool team, and I'm sure you've got one from West Brom as well. Do you want me to say it? Go on. Stuart Nicholson. Stuart Nick, what a player. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> His strike was terrible. He's what happened to him? Uh, I don't even think he plays anymore. Oh. It, it might be re- below the Vanarama North and South. He's right. You know, this. you, you talked about reset. Yeah. This uh, It was September when he scored that goal in the derby. What a way to endear yourself to the fans. Yeah, wasn't that the first game after the September the, September the 11th? Cause well, we, we played Bauer Vista on the night of 9-11, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. I've got a ticket for that. Have you? Yeah. Did you actually go? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think oh. I, I'm pretty sure. I just remember being really weird. Yeah, I had football yeah. training that night. Yeah, I just remember being very, very Whole born very boys weird. represent. Yeah. Well, I think in the month of September as well was when we saw, aside to Steven Gerrard, that we don't tend to see anymore. No, I don't mean a, a quality box-to-box midfielder. <laughs> but do you all remember his tackle on uh, Ugo Eggio in the 3-1 defeat West Brom, at think. home to Aston Villa? It was George Boateng. Was it Boateng? Yeah, it was Ugo Eggio. And it was one of the most brutal tackles that I've ever, ever witnessed. Uh, yeah, I thought there was going to be a death, to <laughs> be honest. Well, did he made a habit of that, didn't he, earlier on in his career? Do you remember his two footer where he left the ground and absolutely nailed Gary Naismith, Naismith in the derby? Yeah. That was just a vile, vile tackle. I think, yeah, I think that was the season after as well. So he clearly didn't l- learn from his mistakes there. I've got a surprisingly, uh, surprising a note about the Liverpool team. What's that? It must have been a trend because they all had shaved heads. I've told, currently got Danny Murphy, Stephen Gerrard, Jersey Dudek, Emil, Emil Heskey, Jamie Carragher. Have you, co- have you tried to copy them, Mark? What are you talking about? I just, I just noticed it. Well, to be fair, I don't think Danny Murphy ever had much say <laughs> in, his, uh, in his hair. Yeah, I, um, think he, I think he faces similar follicle challenges ourselves, Mark. Yeah, but um, we did try to make up for it, Brad, in January by bringing a man called <laughs> Abel Xavier <laughs> to the football club. I've got a note right, about him. Right, wait, no, wait, wait. <laughs> This is my favourite moment in this whole season. Is, when, is it Gazza? Where, yeah, is when he's getting interviewed outside. <laughs> Gazza's hanging there. out the window. He's going, don't go, Abel. No, <laughs> don't go, Abel. And then like, he, as soon as Abel left, he got, he got off to Burnley, I think. So. Yeah, well, this, is, this was like the time when, when football was quality. And I, you, know, you genuinely would wake up in the morning and be shocked by transfers and things like that. And I was actually on my holiday in Tenerife. And my dad popped just down the stairs to get a paper. And he came back and he just asked me, what kind of a player is Abel Xavier? <laughs> and I just, Shite I completely that. out of the, I just went, oh, he's absolutely terrible. And he went, really? Yeah. 
slammed the paper down on my, my, um, on the table I was sat at, and it just said, Xavier <laughs> sides for Liverpool. It's like, oh, dear me. Didn't he score on his debut? He scored 11 minutes into his debut in a 6-0 away win at Portman Road. <laughs> It was, and his other goal was in the Champions League quarter final against Bayer Leverkusen. I don't remember. That. In a four-two defeat, you know when Yari Lippmann and skinned half the team. Uh, was that when Lucio put us out? Yeah, that was the very first and only football game I've ever cried at. Really? I went to my room and cried. I wish I could say the same thing about me, but I've already um, had about an hour of crying this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> you know, one of the notes I've written down here was, like, in a clash of two of the biggest dickheads to have ever played football in the Premier League. Robbie Savage and Craig Burley. Robbie Savage dives to win a penalty, <laughs> celebrates, and then jaws Burley with no, with about six teeth missing on the top level, goes over and grips him, and there was murder. I love all that. You see, this is what's missing from things like and I was you know, I was reminded by players like I forgot Malcolm Christie ever <laughs> And I remember John Gregory had just taken over oh, at Derby. John Gregory, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you get sacked from Damn, Villa. Mate. He's just rotten at Crawley Town now, isn't he? Look, and he's enough one who looked like he was gonna rob you if you if you it was just you and him yeah. in a dark alley. He'd sell he'd sell you the Skoda if you wanted one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so interested in, you know, I would love to pick the minds of owners and um that some of the some of the managers that came in. Term uh, Colin Todd re- <laughs> replaced replaced Jim Smith at Derby. <laughs> Jim Smith. Now, uh, for all you know, I, it took me years to to actually realise that Colin Todd was a bit of a Derby legend. So that sort of explains why yeah, of he course. probably got the I've job. I've got a note about Jim Smith being Come sat. The Go background on. music to uh, Sky Jim- Montage. Was time to say goodbye <laughs> as uh, Jim Smith was sacked. <laughs> well, I don't know. This song. You know, this was the season of fantastic football montages, and I will get to them yeah. as they happen. I mean, I know Mark is well, eagerly anticipating one that comes in the month of November. <laughs> well, I've got a really, I've got a really stupid, I've got a really stupid one that I laughed my ass off at this afternoon of the five horse race, where Sky had basically got five different blokes in the kits of Liverpool, Manchester United, oh, yeah. Newcastle. Do you remember this? And it was them jogging round the track and field, <laughs> and they were overtaking each other. Which season, and Liverpool are back at the which, which season was it where they did that with the, with the cars? They had, I think it was like there was a Man United. And Chelsea car and oh they were racing head. down they were like leaving blue and red streaks as they were taking <laughs> it was awful you <coughs> you talking about Newcastle there it, watching this season made me remember one of my favourite non-Liverpool players to have ever played the game Laurent Robert surely Never. surely the king of that level of football or the Kevin Morales operates <laughs> in now where he's like he's the best of the shite like, like the yeah, average, Kevin Nolan, like, yeah. like the average footballer, he's absolutely, he's absolutely phenomenal in comparison to the rest of like, you know, the ninety percent of the rest. He's not quite at that level where he is. He would go down as, oh, he's great. He's going to get a big move. I was always convinced that we were going to sign Lauren Robert. Yeah, me too. For we the old, signing French, weren't we? At yeah, the time? and also because he had the same colour boots as John Arnarisa, which were the gold <laughs> Nikes. Do you remember them? They were, they were gold. There was no two ways about it. He looked like they won him in a cracker. <laughs> and obviously, Reese and Robert had two of them. <laughs> Best shots in the Premier League probably at that time. Oh yeah, and plus he was teamed up with well, Alan Shearer at the yeah, time. Do you, remember, do you remember when they played Man United and him and Roy Keane nearly had the statement? That was and that season. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Shearer did that classic. He he, he turned around and said like what, and then did the classic hold me back thing. And Roy Keane had none of that. Roy Keane surely the hardest man to have ever played football. Surely, and certainly certainly in our lifetime. But I'll leave that open. What, what, I, what I was just going to say then is this was the first season at Newcastle as well where Craig Bellamy really started to come through. Yeah, he was he getting was some crucial well, games. He, 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 crucial, he got some real, real crucial goals in Newcastle. He did win the Young Player of the Year. Yeah, day. yeah. And it was the first time, you know, he had a pretty injury free season there and often he just sort of came through, didn't he? <laughs> Back to the football and still in the month of September. And two men that really caught the eye. And I didn't, I wasn't aware of this at the time, but I, well, I must have been, but I've forgotten. Paolo Di Canio, who was, of course, what uh, a player playing for West Ham. Nearly got his move to United yeah, this season. Very, very close, wasn't he? And Didn't they play each other while the saga was ongoing and all the United fans were singing, we've got to carry we've got oh, to I'm not sure that, that, that happened, although I may have just made that up. Well, anyway, yeah, he had a, he had a great season in a, in, a good sa- in a good West Ham side on Trevor paper. Sinclair, what a flair he was for them. Do you, remember, do you remember like the, the scissor kick that he scored? Surely one of the best goals in the league. The bicey, the bicey for uh, oh, QPR. QPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he, he sort of... Well, this was the season that he broke into the England squad and started at the World Cup. At yeah. Wing. Yeah, was, I mean... He wasn't meant to, was he? He wasn't meant to. Yeah. Gerard broke his foot. Yeah. Then Murphy broke his something. And then he got his Hairline. chance. 
<laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's why we never made it international. <laughs> yeah, exactly, level. exactly. We will be starting at Centre Midfield for the Reds if, <laughs> if we weren't judged unfairly based on our hair. I uh, know, but based on players such as Graham Souness and uh, Trenny McDermott, exactly. we never had much of a chance. Exactly. But, Jimmy uh, Floyd Hasselbank set the world alight this season as well. Yeah, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, who of course now has just taken over the managerial post at Burton Bert, Albion. Bert, and, yeah. And on, despite Jimmy. playing for Chelsea, another one, another member of the my favourite footballers ever who've never played for Liverpool. Yeah. He used to take five aside penalties, didn't he? One step, top in. Yeah, I, I always, I tend, because I, I love Jimmy as well, but I, t- I tend to think of his time at Leeds rather than Chelsea, because yeah. I just, I really, I cannot stick Chelsea. Surely second only to Robbie Fowler in terms of Premier League finishes as well. Everything, top corner. Absolutely, okay. both feet as well. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, he, footballer. he was a good footballer. He, he never saw maybe right at the end at Cardiff when he played up front with Fowler, but <laughs> I don't not remember them play ever. Really? I know, I know, I know it happened. Oh. but did, I mean, did they ever do anything? No, I, this is what I'm saying. This may be the only time I could have thought of Hasselbank has passed it because he was he just sort of kept on going. Do you know what I mean? With Fowler, wasn't he? Fowler sort of went out. <laughs> Fowler only retired in Gerard's testimonial, and that was a uh, yeah. But I still think it's still one of those things. Every time Liverpool go through a little goalless patch. Bring him back. Yeah, there's, there's old fellows all over the ground saying, tell you what, we should bring that fowler back. Yeah. He's still not retired. Best finisher we've ever had him. Yeah, well, if I'm, if I'm fully behind. If we, I think we should start a campaign here at, at Egg Walls as well as to get Fowler a four-year deal to save Brendan Rodgers' job. I'm in. Robbie, Maybe if you're listening, we've got your back, mate. What were you still going to say? Then? Bring him in as manager. Bring him in as manager. Oh, no. Manager, manager player, lad. Yeah, player manager. I have himself the captain's armband yeah. and the number nine chair. Mate, <laughs> see you later, Ricky Lambert, your big bookcase. He, for, he for, <laughs> forces Stephen Gerrard to retire because his legs have fell off. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, enough, Moving enough, on. enough about that. Yeah, <laughs> to, um, <laughs> to the month of October, which uh, and I seem to see Michael with a lot of notes on the month of October. What have you got for us? The very first one, Thomas Gravison's goal against West Ham. Great goal. But more importantly, Thomas Gravison. In my first year of university, I went to the midnight release of Call of Duty. It was Call of Duty Black Ops. Some of you may remember it. <laughs> I'm in the queue with mate of mine, Ash. Ash, if you're listening, you won't be. But if you are, all right, mate. We're stood in line. No word of a lie. A packed game store in town behind Thomas Gravis. Did you talk to him? I, said, I just nodded. I gave him the lead on. I didn't want to make it too much of a fuss because Blue knows any. But, you know. What are you looking forward to most of all, Cod, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> he, well, didn't, didn't he win like millions and millions and he's, sco- he's scoring a lot now oh, he, wow. he was in a, he was in Vegas you know, what yeah, it was is he, he was in the industry no, no he's got what him. happened was he was in Vegas and he, he invested like about four mil- like four million of his career earnings into a company that just got huge and then sold all his shares about 130 million he's loaded so he's just living in Vegas with an absolutely stunning wife just having a laugh now with his cod ghosts pre- pre-order <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's just still playing that, still playing that you know rags to riches there and yeah, carry on. Well, I was going to say, this season, as I've just been saying in the music break, was the home to one of the greatest single own goals that has ever, ever, ever taken place in football. Hayden Fox against Blackburn. All right. Cup, corner comes in, yeah. flicks on. I remember that. Yeah. Goes to clear it, and it hits a standing fourth, bounces straight in. There was, there was, there was the ginger Australian centre back. What a man! There, there was one a bit later on in the season which rivaled that for a, a great own goal. I can't remember who well, it might have been Blackburn. I'm pretty sure it's from about 40 yards. It wasn't Rita, was it? No. No, it, it, I know what you're on about. You're on about March the 2nd, 2002, when Frank Sinclair yep. managed to score past his own goalkeeper Shout from out to Sam Robertson. yards. Yeah, that is exactly what I'm on about. That was, that was also a fantastic Frank goal. Sinclair, West Brom legend. Yes, sir, West Brom legend indeed. Uh, I was going to say, you can't go through an own goal hour without, without mentioning Frank, Frank Sinclair. Sinclair. And I think that might have been his greatest ever one. Uh, Ian Walker. It, it was, was brilliant. That, it was, that, it was that, like, I, I won't lie, I haven't actually seen May... Or April, because I could already get up to match for a left. But that was the last thing I saw. Frank Sinclair saw that one. It's got that one. the one where he slotted it in past Walker for a while. Yeah, long the keep, way, yeah. yeah, the keeper like died <laughs> desperately, and it just just went past him, rolled in the net. I mean, well, in that, that Hayden not... Fox game, two guy, another another two guy. member of my favourite players who've never played for Liverpool team. He still scored an absolute world. I I still think he could do his job. Still, I, I, I'm anyway. pretty sure he, he played for Chef Wed only like a year or two ago. Um, did he? Yeah, he's playing for Shet. Isn't that Marcus You're making him a Marcus yeah. Tug guy. Oh, yeah, that's who I'm thinking. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> <laughs> talking about Tug guy. What a, what a, what a only play to, for Middlesbrough. What, what a way to ruin the credibility of Egger Lawson's well. He's like, <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> but yeah, two guys were scoring worldies for fun this season and did so in that 7-1 victory. I'll switch it up. Uh, 
I was thinking of Kevin Nolan, who was surprisingly number 15. Uh, but he's an iconic number four. Like, he's number, number four for all his life after the being 15. Can you think of anyone else who, who was number four for their whole career and was iconic? Gerard for England. Like, you've got number, you've got number seven, you've got the, your number sevens, you've got your number nines, you've got your number tens. His whole career? I do not Just think like that, that Kevin Nolan counts as being <laughs> iconic. He does. He does for me. Fair enough, Dadley. Like, well, actually, it was uh, on this season that he scored at Anfield on New Year's Day in a one-one draw. Exactly for Bolton, I he was very good for them. I, yeah, he, well, I mean, he was a good player. He scored he? the winner at Old Trafford. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went mad scoring. <laughs> well, well, yeah, he's a red, isn't he? Yeah. Like you got your token numbers. You got like your John Terry's at twenty-six and Carnu's at twenty-five. Carnu number four for Nigeria. He, used, back he, on, he would solely wear number four for Nigeria. I'm on numbers at the moment. Christian Daly number seven. Yeah, that what, hurt, what an odd one. That hurt my eyes. Yeah, what an odd one. Because what an odd one. When Aruna Kone got well. two. Yeah, that was strange. It's nerd as bad as Eto being number five, but yeah. Christian Daly number seven. Yeah, but when, you, when you're as good as Samuel Eto, you can demand yeah. the number. Or, you know, when you've had the career, Samuel Eto, you can demand the number. But Christian, Christian Daly, Daly, Daly taking the number seven. <laughs> what an absolute travesty. <laughs> Yeah, I got Aspas was our number nine last year, lad. That's a great depressing point. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Iago Aspas is fantastic call. Yeah, would you rather would you rather have Iago Aspas or the fridge freezer, Ricky Lambert? Hundred percent Ricardo Lambert. Well, you couldn't pay me to watch Iago Aspas again. What a hilariously awful football. He scored more goals than Lambert this season, hasn't he? Ours is brain scored and die. Like five percent. Brain and die. Even better. Oh god. He's so depressing. Moving on. <laughs> Robbie Fowler slotted a hat against Leicester. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his last three goals in his first spell, and it was uh, it was the tale of two strikers that game. If I, yeah. I remember, Rod- I remember, Rod- I remember Rodney Marsh was watching it, and uh, oh, he was quite him. animated before he got sacked for making a joke about a uh, was it the t- was it the two army joke he did? I don't want to say it just in case I get sacked. But um, do you remember Rodney Marsh getting the sack? No. Yeah, I do. It was comparing the best day of my life comparing Newcastle to I hate the Rodney tsunami. Marsh. Oh my god! Hey, I hate Rodney Marsh. Oh, please elaborate. He said, uh, "When you know West Brom's great escape season?" Yes. He said uh, something like, "If uh, West Brom stay up, is mar- they h- he hated us?" And he was like, "If West Brom stay up, I will be wearing lipstick. I'll dress as a woman." And then we stayed up on the final day. And West Brom fans used to chat, "Where's your lipstick, Rodney Marsh? You're right." Da 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 da. And yeah. to be fair, he used to do things like because uh, he used sorry. to say stuff like, "I'm going to shave my hair if that happens," and then it happens that he did, but he didn't. He didn't tragedy. dress up as a woman, though. Rodney Marsh, king of the wolves. Yeah, he's, he, he's, him, he's, him he's, a, he's a pearly king. Um, yeah. He's jelly deals, that fella. Yeah, can't be doing with Rodney Marsh. No. Why were we talking about Rodney well, Marsh? You, well, interesting segue, Mark, because you were talking about the Leicester game, the tale of two strikers. Now, Robbie Fowler's second oh, yeah. in that game was set up by that one Daniel Murphy. However, the realist that should guy. have gone to Ian Marshall, who did one of the most dramatic comedy falls that I have ever, ever witnessed on a football pitch before Danny Murphy ran onto it and set up the, the god himself. Is that, is that your favourite comedy fall? Mine is definitely John Terry against Robin Van Persie when uh, Arsenal won at Stamford Bridge 5-3 a few seasons ago. Like He realises that Van Persie's got yeah behind him and he's got to beat him for pace and he literally just falls. He, he just sees him and goes... Oh bollocks! And just throws himself on the floor, and Van Persie goes on to score. Like, there was, he didn't trip himself up. He literally just like jumps and and doesn't put his legs back down. My favourite comedy fall was it actually happened last year. Liverpool oh, okay. were playing uh, Chelsea. Oh, <laughs> moving on. Oh, no blue. Yeah. <laughs> this it. this month was the home to Peter Schmeichel's volley against their uh, friends of the show Everton FC. What for Villa? Yeah. Gosh, it wasn't quite enough, though, was it? No, they still yeah. lost, though, didn't they? they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Three yeah. is a free two. Yeah. See, th- now this is the thing. I was going to bring it up just to uh, have a more of a generic football chat, but w- from this, with it being a five-horse race, and I was looking at the, I was looking at the teams that were going for the title, and then in sixth you had Chelsea, who had a decent side, a very good side, one of the greatest strike but, forces. But they were, you know, they, they were miles off. Do you think now it, it, we just got such a big problem with the teams like Chelsea stockpiling? So you know, if if you if you throw a Chelsea with a you know the me- mega rich money into that season, they probably would have would have taken a Bellamy a bit sooner, and would have taken somebody else out, and Liverpool probably would have bought half the you know Fulham side <laughs> for about fifty million. But um, is that is that the problem now? Is that the fact that you know if West Brom are having a half decent season, you can fully expect Liverpool. See you later, side though, lad. I, I don't think he score again this season. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he'll score until we. Yeah, pay thirty him. million for him, and then he'll not score for three years. Well, for us, it's like if if uh, you want to bid, if someone come in for fifteen million, but you know, I'd accept it right now. Yeah, to that amount of money, our club would be. But we've got a good record of signing uh, 
spending that money wisely. So uh, I fully if fifteen million. Yeah, be. who's trying to who's trying to scout your scout? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I Someone that. is trying to scout your scout, and I'm sure it's Spurs. Uh, might be. We've had Daniel Terry, Levy. We had Terry Burton. He's come back to the squad. Uh, ah, Terry Burton, the man who uh, <laughs> replaced Egil Olsen, actually. <laughs> Definitely not a friend of the show. <laughs> no, no, he was my number two as Nottingham Forest manager on uh, Football Manager years ago, though. Is right. And then I sacked him for um, gross misconduct when you realised that he took the man himself his job. <laughs> <laughs> he, he stole a livelihood from Hegelos. He took food off the table. <laughs> to be fair, Terry Burton had helped me get get Forest from League One to the Champions League, and then I sacked him and brought in Franco Baresi. Is right. <laughs> yeah, well, right too. And then we won the Champions League, so I think I was um, more than. Well within my rights, but we've been talking about strikers, and I need because this is the season when it all changed for me, and and I realised that I I took football a, a bit too seriously, and um, did, yeah, well, you know, and uh, it was of course the uh, that God left Liverpool in um, the Should worst. Take a minute. In the worst moment of my life, without a shadow of a doubt, the decision to sell Robbie Fowler to Leeds is still something that I will never be able to accept. I'll never forgive Phil Thompson when he said that he he forced the move, he wanted a new challenge. We all know that wasn't true. No. And um, Come back, Robbie. I've got to admit, it was probably beyond... I'm, I'm sure I'm sure Brad did not give a uh, flying monkeys that morning when Fowler was paraded around Ellen Road with the 27. Number Blasphemy. 27. Oh. Who wore number nine for them at the time? Is it the Duca? The Duca. Not fit to lace Robbie's boots. No, although he's got four against us. Not fit to lace Robbie's boots. But um, and it, it was just just just, a, just, a, just oh. a little thing on Mark Viduka there. Um, Harry Kewell did an interview with uh, the, the Liverpool uh, website about a year ago, and what um, was it? No, sorry, it was Stuart Down. Actually, Stuart Down and right. <laughs> Two very different. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Frank. No, yeah, but, yeah, but they bo- both brought about as much to the club. Um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah Stuart Down and, and the one thing that cemented to me that he he was never fit to be a Liverpool player so he said the best player he'd ever played with was Matt Viduka <laughs> he's like you know he's played with Gerrard two seasons and he's, he's Matt Viduka that's that? why Downing, he never made Downing it Downing said that Stuart Down. So he played with so he played with Viduka at Middlesbrough. Yeah, Middlesbrough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he said, and he played with Luis Suarez. Yeah, exactly. And he his his best the pe- player he, he said was his best player to play he with he Matt Viduka. England for God knows how many years. Yeah, exactly. Really? What a strange, strange man. Well, it's just go. it's just to be fair. If you're down, down in sure. viewpoint, when Dan's breaking through, you got to think if he's whipping balls to Mark Viduka. That's a great point as well. Yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. But then uh, again, that's I don't care. Think Stupid. Okay. Yeah, I think of the plays he's played. Oh, I know, I know. It's a bit strange, but I can sort of see where he's coming from. He's a young lad and help, help him out. Would this have been the season that Stuart Downer was on loan at Sunderland? Or 1 or 2? No, he was at Middlesbrough. Was that 0 2 yeah, or 3? Yeah, he was. No, no, he, he, was, he was in the Middlesbrough squad, definitely. Have you even broken in? Yeah. He was, he was, he was in the squad because I was on the Middlesbrough squad before on the Wikipedia and he was there. Middlesbrough had a very young James Morrison but didn't play. Yeah. They, well, they've always had quite a decorated youth side, haven't they? Yeah. A lot of players have broken through. So did they start the season with Brian Robson and Teddy Venables? I think they did. I'm not sure. And then, then McLaren went there, didn't they? Yeah, McLaren ended up there. McLaren was definitely there, I think they had, did, they had, did they have Southgate centre-back this season? Yeah. yeah. And in fact, you know what? Talking of Middlesbrough centre-backs, I've just thought of another disgraceful number choice. Jonathan Woodgate, number eight. <laughs> <Yeah. No. laughs> what is that about? Vile. Vile. <laughs> Should have been stripped, stripped of every honour they've ever received for that decision. But they've only won one thing, though, ever, haven't they? Well, exactly. Well, you know what? <laughs> they, they, were, they were on the rise till they signed their <laughs> game the number eight. Yeah. And the footballing gods have spited them for such a vile decision. It was, a, it was also a season that we saw um, replacing Fowler as well. And uh, one of the, for me, one of the top strikers that's ever played in the Premier League, Nicholas Anelka, mm-hmm. that uh, Liverpool got in on a loan yeah. mm-hmm. with a view to sign for £10 million. Absolute snip. Only to sign the man, <coughs> the myth, the juve. <laughs> <laughs> the first man in 50 years to wear number nine for Liverpool and go through a whole season without scoring. And I've got Bolton Wanderers fans amongst other people chewing my ear off about what a great player Duke was <laughs> and that Sergio Aguero spat on him in the Europa League match because he was scared. All he used to do was win corners. And spit at ball boys. He spat, he spat at Celtic, didn't he? He spat on a Middlesbrough fan as well. What an awful, awful human being. Yeah, I have no They're time like, for if you're listening. Juve. Born you off. are You're definitely not a, fl- a friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you were in that Terry Terry Gibson, Terry Burton category. Yeah, of do one. Eggle's got no time for you. <laughs> is Eggle Olsen still alive? Shout out if you are. It must be. 
You must be still going. That's a, if I was going to say if you need sweets in, but this isn't live. So, if, yeah, just let us know if you if you find out in the next uh, three to six months. Just to go oh. back to what we were saying before, Mara, you were talking about uh, Leeds. Mm. This was the season. In fact, this very month was when they signed Seth Johnson. Seth Johnson surely typifies Leeds at the time, throwing silly money at half decent young players. Only to, for it to come back and bite them on the ass. I know, God, isn't it embarrassing when teams do that? I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad teams don't do it these days. At least we aren't putting the club on the line when we're doing it, though. <laughs> no, well, no, that's the uh, that's the thing. In first year, big up talking Tejan about Lovren. Le- talking about Leeds, we had um, we had a Q and A with Peter Ridsdale in the first year, and uh, I just went, you know, out of interest really. It was majority Leeds fans going there to. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it to the man and a fair play to Ridsdale. Did you go to that, Brad? When Peter Ridsdale was in Green Bank? No, I didn't bother. Fair play to him. He, you know, he's 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 very good at what he does, and he was he was batting all these questions out of the park. But I brought up the fact that he'd broken my young heart by signing Roberts Fa- Roberts Fowler for uh, you know eleven million pounds or whatever it was, and he said that until he chipped oh, his hip in too. April. 2002. He was the best player. <laughs> he was the best player that, like everyone said, he was the best player at the club, and that was at the time yeah. when they had Kuhl and his pomp and everything. They just said that Fowler was a different level. I've got some breaking news. I got Olsen still alive. Get in. He's 72. It's right, I go big up yourself. <laughs> what a 72. Man. What a man. When's his birthday? Because we could, we should make it a national. 22nd holiday. of April 1942. Oh yeah, we're going to be celebrating that day here on Egg Olsen's wellies. Yeah, we are. Uh, poor old Egg Olsen. Do you reckon we one, can auction one, off some Egg Olsen? One, one, one thing I wanted to bring up was uh, there, uh, there was so Graham Smith from Charles Blackburn this season, and I think every interview he, he gave, like he just slowly looked more like he wanted to shoot himself in the face. <laughs> like he just see by by the time it got to like March, like he gave an interview saying like how playing against um, it was Leicester. I think was such a huge game for them. And the way he was saying it, you just you just looked like he wanted to kill himself. He did not want to be a black anymore, and he just didn't care anymore. Oh, I think I think he still thought he could have done a job at Liverpool, to be honest. Yeah. Um, old, old Graham, and uh, he did a good job at Blackburn because he got them back up. He won the Worthington Cup with them this season, wasn't it? But then mm-hmm. the, it was it was one of those Swansea things where they won the Carling uh, the Worthington Cup, sorry, and then they went on this horrendous run and just you know j- not just about stayed in the league, but they weren't a million miles off going down. He did have two guys to work with though. Yeah, they also signed and Andrew Andy, Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, decided why to Cole? change his name. Why did he rebrand himself as Andrew? I don't know, but apparently he won every. He, he was brilliant as Andy. But Gra- he changed his name. I think. I, I think we've put our finger on the problem there. Graham Sooner said that as a footballer, he'd have given him nine out of ten, but as a person, he'd have given him a minus nine out of ten. Um, but back to the football because we are running out of time. We've only reached November. And this might uh, have to be a two-parter. Yeah, another player that. Uh, caught Michael's eye throughout his uh, upbringing was a chap from Charlton named Klaus that lob against Arsenal Ricky Wright was in goal and he absolutely <laughs> Ricky Wright done him <laughs> what a footballer Klaus Jensen was I've, in fact I've just realised now that this, these players that I've been uh, calling my favourites who've never played for Liverpool the team is very very top heavy so yeah. I think we need to find a few defenders well, hey, Brad's got to talk about one though I've got a, I've got a defender Alpai Ozelon. Aston Villa legend. The Aston Villa player who uh, who had to... Uh, he's got his contract... Ter- Alp- Alp- Alpai. Alpai. Oh my God, yeah, He yeah, got yeah. his contract terminated at Aston Villa because uh, in a friendly for Turkey, they played against England and he poked David Beckham in the eye and he was so hated in England, the chairman at the time just sat to say, look, you're not allowed to play for us, you're going to get booed, everyone hates us. Was so that Doug Ellis? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like was Doug Ellis, yeah. So they terminated his contract and now... How did you get your t- contract terminated? You poked David Beckham in the eye. Do you know what I would have... Uh, just on, on D- Doug Ellis, talk about people who sell you dodgy cars. Yeah. Doug Ellis was another man, and at one point he worked with no other than Big Rod Atkinson. <laughs> can you remember them two? Having, can you imagine them two having a conversation in a couple They'd of... both be trying to sell each other the same car. <laughs> it would just be brilliant. What a God, what a blast with the past is Alpi. Good player. Yeah. Until he'd done that. Yeah. Was that that was it this season that he was It was he played this season and then it was the year after he put David Beckham in the eye. Right, yeah, because I was also gonna I was gonna bring up Aston Villa because um what on earth possessed Doug Ellis to bring back Graham Taylor? Oh my word. At what point did he think 
I've Graham got, Taylor. It's a bit like a few years Carlton. ago Carlton. when somebody somebody in the Newcastle boardroom went, I know who the man is to steady the ship. Joke it here. <laughs> <laughs> like, what my, is going on in these people's heads? My favourite memory of Graham Taylor is when he's having a go at the lines and saying, you've just got me the sack. He's on the side, he's just screaming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that he's, the documentary? Yeah, he's just there? screaming at the lines. When, you've got me the sack. Thanks for that. Hope you're <laughs> proud of yourself. He's <laughs> 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 just probably absolutely fuming because he's going to get fired because he, he was rubbish. Was playing it on the lines when the lines was just like, this French fellow doesn't got a clue what he's saying. <laughs> I think it was November. It might. I think it was November that we beat the Manx three one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, when John Arnarisa scored that goal. That um, goal. That goal. That, we don't need to really go on about it, but it was a great goal. Mm. I'm sure there was a lot know. of great goals <laughs> in this month. Kevin Phillips at Leeds. Legend. Absolutely brilliant. Him and Niall Quinn up front. Yeah. The she, season. Like, the, there was a lot of great strike partnerships this season, wasn't there? Well, not great, maybe that's the wrong way, but very, very, very good strike partnerships for teams who didn't really do much. Sure, Hasselbank and Good Johnson were as good as anybody. Quinn and Phillips were phenomenal. So it was, I was Owen and Heskey, wasn't it, really? Well, yeah. And then we had Lippman and Anelka. Not a bad four, really. Um, who were West Brom's uh, strikes? Uh, this this in, year, in, in, in the Division Championship. One, yeah. Scott Dobie, Danny Dicchio, Bob Taylor. Was Scott Dolby there then? He was our top scorer in the Premier League the next year. Blinky on six. It. Oh, gosh. That, that year, speaking of Klaus Jensen, Klaus Jensen's played for Charlton the year after, and they had Dennis Romeldar. The only game I've ever left early, we lost four, We were losing 4 0 at home to Charlton after 86 minutes. That must have been 05. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. Because Romeldar, that's what, yeah. That's Sorry, what yeah. Romeldar and Danny Murphy in the same midfield, and they were class. Yeah, they absolutely uh, dicked us as soon as the game I've ever left early. Walter Smith, who was doing a very good job at Everton at the time, and was replaced by none other than Preston's David Moyes. Do you ever think a manager the of start Preston of a North End could, tenure there. Could, replace, uh, could replace an Everton man again? The manager of Preston North End. Simon Grayson's doing a decent job. I would love <laughs> to see Simon Grayson at Everton. <laughs> yeah, so would I. Make of that what you will. <laughs> Bring back Teddy Burton. Teddy Burton. He'd do a great job at the F. He's, he's at us. They'd love him. Although we had a manager, we, you know, we, we had a player from uh, the old the old Preston North End and he ended up being a decent manager for us. Oh, Mr. Willie no, Shanks. None other than Mr. <laughs> Mr. William H. Shankly. <laughs> from the cop. <laughs> also a res- resident of the Spy and Calf. <laughs> Hey, another great player, another great striker. I thought it was another yeah, one. Yeah, Bill Shankly was. Marion Pahars. Oh, ah, no. this so was the year that the Latvian year. legend. Yeah, this was the year that Southampton moved into St Mary's, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and uh, Gordon Strachan. There was another Strachan. good montage about uh, them moving from the Delta, so, and they shut the doors. So. Yes. <laughs> Sky, if you're listening, bring back your montage creators from 2002 <laughs> because they earned their money and so. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Gordon Strachan is a man I, I do I, I do I do quite like watching Gordon Strachan in interviews because mm. I, I'll never forget watching his press <laughs> conference live on Sky Sports News when um, when the opening question from the journalist was so uh, Graham do you think you're the right man to take Southampton <laughs> forward that he just went no <laughs> classic is that when he then said uh, if you ask a silly question you're gonna get a silly answer yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, a year later. <laughs> He got them to the FA Cup final. He did. And he, I th- he did a good job there, He started. He? I remember other than Chris Marsden in the final. Chris Marsden. Mm. Someone there, Klaus Lundekram. Yeah. Lundekram. Yeah. I call him what I want. Right. I, as, you, as you know from the past, I'm very good at pronouncing players' names. I used to get Klaus, <laughs> uh, not Klaus Lundekram, Chris Marsden and Mark Draper, Arsenal legend, sorry, Aston Villa legend, mixed up all the time. Now, Mark Draper, I've got an interesting story about Mark Draper. Interesting for me and possibly my brother listening at home. We were playing FA Premier League stars. Oh, now, now what a game for a start! But before ever he get me and my brother shared a save as Liverpool, he brought in none other than Clarence Seedorf. Right, he wanted to win another European Cup. Right, he told me before every game, save it, so that way if I lose, he can come back on and win the game. So he off he went to school. He used to have to go to school half an hour earlier than me because he was in high school. I traded. Clarence Seedorf for Mark Draper <laughs> in an exchange deal. <laughs> Played a game, won. So I thought, oh, I'll have to save this. Saved it. He came home and went spare. <laughs> I still don't think he's forgiven me. <laughs> Do you know what? I, that's really weird that you said that because I signed Clarence Seedorf on the Premier League 
game as well. And I used to call him because I used to do my own commentary. So I used to call Didn't him. We all? I used to call him Seedorf. Yeah. Also did that. And um, but do you remember? Do you remember this game? Uh, it was the first game that Martin Tyler was on. They had key. They had keys. Uh, sorry, they had Gray and, and Tyler. And every time the keeper would make a save, Martin Tyler would react as if it was a shot. So it would be like Vestavald. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be he'd be just gathering it up, and there was obviously just a little glitch in the game. So he'd just be going and Vestavald gathers it up, and it's like. It was a pass. It was just a pass back from the defender. But um, if you remember yeah. in that game, it was almost impossible to score from outside the box. I did it once with Celestine Babayaro. Did you sign him for Liverpool? As well? I didn't. I was playing with Chelsea. Yeah. Ooh, I, I didn't used to do okay. that. Okay. Did you used to do the thing as well? And the night before, you so say you were playing Nottingham Forest on the Saturday. Would you play them loads on on FIFA or whatever on the Friday night and just beat them eighteen nil? Yes. Yeah, me too. There's nerds everywhere at home. Yes. Football nerds like us for at home going, oh my God, this man is a visionary. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, as, it's as if he's reading off stories of my life. <laughs> yeah. But let's give a little break from the Premier League and I want to talk about West Bromwich Albion and get Brad a bit in, more into the uh, into the season. Yep. It was the season that you finally made your return to the top flight. Yeah, after a long time. I didn't know who West Bromwich Albion were until August 2002. So what, give, five-time FA Cup winners, Westbrook, good. I, I, yeah, in no, the no, in no. the eighteen hundreds. But um, <laughs> so. yeah, um, how so? How did that season go? How did, how did you get up? Well, basically, uh, the season before we lost in the playoff semi-finals to Bolton, and the season before that, Gary Megson saved us. And uh, so uh, we had a fantastic manager, Gary Megson. It rev- revolutionised for the formation of three-five-two slash five-three-two. Uh, we had. Not not one standout goal scorer. I think Scott Dowie was top on sixteen, so uh, no one no one there who would score all the all the goals. But it they were dosed about a bit. Doby sixteen, Dickio twelve, Clement got eight from left back. Neil Clement, what a man! Indicative of the time that if you were half decent and had a left foot, that you could become a professional footballer. <laughs> he was a very good player, one of the best players. That's why I grew up in the wrong era. You see, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Possibly the left best left back I've seen in years. Pocket Noel is up there now, but uh, I've strayed. I hope uh, you only mean for West Brom. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. No, yeah. But uh, basically... A- Ashley Cole would have swerved <laughs> off the road when he was listening. <laughs> ba- basically, we were 12 points behind Wolves with uh, 10 games left, and we won 8 of 10 to uh, overtake them. But, um, uh, yeah, as we said, we won 8 of the last 10, beat Crystal Palace on the final day 2-0 to Euphoria, and... Uh, we were all on the pitch. Did you think at that time, because sort of, what, nine? Nine years old? Eight years yeah. old? Did you sort of think to yourself then, oh, we're going to be playing United, Arsenal, I couldn't wait to watch. You? I couldn't wait to watch the likes of Man United and Liverpool and teams like this at West Brom. Right, uh, yeah. I thought, because I'm used to watching... Ro- uh, we lost 1-0 to Rotherham that season because Dar- <laughs> Darren Moore went down injured. and the, uh, the Chuckle Brothers there? Chris Sedwick refused to kick the ball out and Alan Lee slotted it past Russell Holt and celebrated despite Darren Moore being down injured. Another <laughs> enemy of the show. Darren Moore. <laughs> Something I want no, to ask no, about. not Darren Moore. Alan Lee and Chris Sedwick. Yeah. So, right. Someone I want They're to on the list. Ban- banned from appearing. <laughs> what, what's your favourite goal from this season? Uh, well, I, I, I had a number. But you go first, seeing as you've uh, asked yeah. the question. I... Uh, over Mars against Liverpool, Champions League. Oh, right. I was going to say, I was that, where's he going with this? I was at that game. Best goal I've ever seen. Is that when the whole mm. of the ground yeah, just applauded? Yeah. yeah, they just yeah. pass it around for about yeah, yeah. 15 minutes to the over the top goal. Just That's when Robbie came on as a sub and went, any chance of giving us the ball? <laughs> carry on. Only a few players get a standing ovation at Anfield as well. Yeah. I know. Apart from the goalkeepers, I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, what a goal, but what about uh, any Premier League strikes that caught your eye, Michael? Yeah, Trevor Sinclair's bike, like, scissor kick from a ridiculous angle. I've got a Absolutely few. Absolutely quality. Team get mentioned in no. the best goals these days, does it? That? No, he, 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 he was another one. He was at that level, like Laurent Robert. He was the best of the average, wasn't he? Yeah. Because he, he was a good footballer. I got a few goals from that season, and I think um, the one that tends to stand out for me is either... The Pires lob against Villa, where Incredible. Andy Gray just oh, I'm applauding, I'm <laughs> applauding. That's genius. <laughs> Either that one or um, the Burkamp turn against yeah. Newcastle. What Two. a season for goals, eh? I know. We had some good ones. 
The Risha? Risha one that yeah. we haven't, you know, that we, we talked about. Michael, Michael, Michael Owen. Michael at Filbert Street. Michael Owen. Michael Owen scored the Wales in the opening day, didn't he, at West Ham? Patrick, West Ham. Patrick Burgers had a 2 0 win against Burra. Do you remember that one? Mm hmm. Bloody brilliant it was. Mm-hmm. Do you remember any goals from that season, Bradley? I was going to say Klaus Jensen against uh, Arsenal, but uh, Plas has already said it. So, yeah. uh, well, there we go. You're, ringing, uh, you're, you're reading off the same hymn sheet. But yeah, uh, any more from 2001, or do you want to move into the new year? I went out to December first, mate. Yeah, okay. You haven't done that yet. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> hey, um, Jimmy Floyd out of bank against the Manx. Scored a crack, an absolute cracker. Um, I'm going to keep going back to this. Him and I, the good Johnson, do not get the credit they deserve. Now, I do not like Chelsea. I can't bear Chelsea. No. And this, they have no history thing, is sort of valid, but it's a bit of a boring cliche now, isn't it? Because they're brilliant. The time, just before they got the money, was my favourite Chelsea team ever. Because just the players they had. Mario Stanic. Tim with his goal on his debut. Chest, knee, volley from about 35 yards. What? I don't think he ever did anything else. Yeah. What a footballer. Didn't Poye score a similar goal, but not as good? Poye, he, he scored all kinds of goals. Yeah, because by, by then he'd gone to Spurs, and because he, he yeah. scored against us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you talk about Chelsea in that month, and that I remember Liverpool being on a super Sunday away at Stamford Bridge. We were 2-0 down, and we got a penalty, and Gary Mack sent up and missed. Do you remember that? I, I don't ever remember Gary McAllister missing a penalty. We missed a penalty at Stamford Bridge. We lost 4-0. And uh, Richie Partridge was an unused substitute. And <laughs> of course being, he was. I remember being outraged that Richie Partridge <laughs> didn't get on the field because he always used to come good on my uh, FIFA career. I, I, I used to make him class, basically. One of the things I've written down in the month of December is that Leicester played Leeds. Their front three is the stuff of legend. They started up front with not only Adi Akinbae, <laughs> not only James Scowcroft, <laughs> but Brian Dean as <laughs> well. Oh my <laughs> What from how? Well, it's a, no surprise that they did nothing. They also had Andy Impey. Andy Impey. Andy Impey, a, a, a hero of my childhood for being one of three players on Premier Manager in '97 to start with a four-star rating outside of the Premier League. Do you know who the other two were? Not or can you hazard a guess? Ninety-seven. Two thousand one. No, ninety-six. Ninety-seven. No, ninety-six. Ninety-seven. Outside the Prem. Outside the Premier League. None of you is going to get it. I'm going to tell you. Taggart, whatever his name is. No. Was were they player? Leicester players? They were not. They were just two players. Who did they play for? I'm not telling you. It was Georgie King Cladsey oh, yeah. and the one and only Jonathan Aldridge. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Tramia Hina. I always used to sign him back. I used to play Aldo Rush. I used to get Barnes back from Newcastle. Mm-hmm. And, and I used to wonder why I got relegated. And David Burrows from somewhere. <laughs> Where was David Burrows? At the Coventry. Cov. Yeah, yeah good shout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a strange observation I made from this season is United had lost six by December. Six yeah. games. That's yeah. almost unprecedented for the Manx then, isn't it? And also a, sim- a, si- a similar, yeah. a similar run is. Do you know when Arsenal's last uh, dropped points were? I'm sure you're going to tell us, Mark. Well, I am. February the second. Very impressive. I Aston never Villa. Eh? Did they pass Villa then? No, they drew at home against Charlton. I never realised that they went on that run. Well, I remember them playing against us. They this won season. every game from February to December. They didn't win; they just didn't lose. Oh, you said didn't drop dropped points. points. Yeah, oh. so they w- must have won. Yeah, they, Jesus. they must have put about fourteen wins together. Really? Well, yeah, no, we, that's, I just we put Tons. nine together last year. Didn't we? It was eleven, wasn't it? Whatever. I don't know. Didn't February win. to the seventh. February the second, because you got to remember the season finished early because of the World Cup. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, okay. Because the World Cup started on. You're only, the pl- you're only playing for about. Five of them months, aren't you? Out of the yeah. nine. Still, well, the thing I think about <laughs> but still, Arsenal, it's impressive. I remember them playing us, and it was in this very month, and they were just a level above. The movement was like Pep's Barcelona. They were just incredible. I was at I, that one, you know. So was I. I will re- remember vividly Robert Perez absolutely terrorising a young number seventeen wearing Steven Gerrard. Mm. Probably doing one of his utility roles, playing it like right back. Yeah, he used to do under Julio as a kid. Well, we had a stinking run at in December and January because I think it was in January when Risa lobbed Dudek from about 20 yards yeah against ahead. Southampton <laughs> <laughs> great finish it really was but um, yeah, yeah. Lundberg scored against us that game yeah he did and then he and then he did exactly the same thing at Highbury three weeks later which obviously you know set up Tyler for one of his uh, iconic just like three weeks ago but then Risa equalised there oh a good point that was at Highbury 
I can't remember. Jan- uh, January, uh, and then the week after, on my brother's birthday, we went to Old Trafford. <laughs> Big up yourself. And Super Dan score. Richie Davis. Yeah, Richie Davis. I Shout out, bro. Coming, coming Congratulations, back. mate. Yeah, coming back from his uh, honeymoon. Honeymoon. I'm not sure where they went. Ireland, I think. I'm going to say, what a letdown. Man, if Richie Davis got your checkbook out, lad. <laughs> well, I think his checkbook's about as bleak as ours these days, <laughs> especially after the wedding. But uh, no, all the best to him if he ends up listening to this at some point in the future. Um, Just on you, previously, Frank, talking about great goals this season. One of them took place this month. Finidi George chipping Thomas Sorensen. I was going to say the 5 0. Yeah. What a footballer. What a footballer. In fact, I just love this Ipswich team. Martin Royce. Martin Royce. Fabian Wilness. Fabian yeah. Wilness. Yeah. Jim, Jim Magilton. Jim Matilton. Jim Matilton. Jim Matilton. Matty Holland in centre. Did mid. Fabian Wilness make Holland. it to. Uh, Warehouse on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm an inside joke for students at UCLan there. <laughs> End of the team that uh, caught my eye was that this was Fulham's first season back in the Prem, wasn't it? Is this when they wore the pizza hook kit? They had the pizza yeah. hook kit. Oh what yeah, what really got me was what a time to be alive. They had an absolute gangster on the side of the pitch with a stick in his mouth. Taniga, oh, Tiga, John Tigana. What a legend he was. He was doing an all right job, and he just got sacked. Is that when they signed Steve Marley for 11 mil? Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I'm fairly certain. That, did they he, sign it for Mar- Marley definitely won the world the Pizza Hut shit, which was good. But they beat us in the FA Cup this year. We we got a long way. And uh, Steve Malbronk and Steve Marley. I think it was this year. Steve Malbronk, Steve Malbronk. What a play. And Steve Played Marley. Leon, didn't he? It was also when uh, David Dunn came to the fore as well. Do you remember what a uh, talent he was and how excited we were to sign him well we he didn't. was the captain of England under 21s now I remember watching England under 21 and they played quite well so I thought I'm sat at home playing Pro Evo or yeah Pro Evo or ISS Pro one of the two who does knows does it really matter does it someone, someone can tweet us and tell us which one it was <laughs> I made England under 21 that day and I made them all with stats that I thought were accurate David Dunn got 99 overall for every single stat <laughs> <laughs> that's what was going on in the head of Michael Platt at age 9 was this the season? Uh, it's just come back to me now because I remember Blackburn Rovers were playing Everton. Is this the season they had the salmon kit? Everton? No, I don't no. think it was. I thought they had the silver kit this year. The Thomas the silver and black one? Yeah. yeah. When, did they have they the, when did they have the salmon pick? I think was it was the, the season after. after. Oh. Maybe wrong. I'm sure someone can tweet it. Yeah, I think you're us. right, actually, but what a shocking kit that was. Yeah. Awful. Awful. In fact, one of the teams I think we haven't given enough air time to tonight is Bobby Robson's Newcastle. Yeah, they were brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're in, the, they're in the title race throughout March. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Gary Speed, fantastic footballer. Mm-hmm. And as you said before, Frank, Craig Bellamy. Craig Bellamy, yeah. At the time. Incredible. Because I've read so quick. Reading Bellamy's book, he says, like, Bobby Robson was awesome. Like, he was the, the reason he came through like that. It's because Bobby Robson just treated him like an adult and allowed him to express himself. So, it was credit to what Bobby Robson was trying to do, wasn't it? Like, it was unbelievable as well, because obviously, Robson's. I remember him coming in and he was, he was an old man when he arrived and it was a shambles yeah I remember that Newcastle that's what I felt like as well absolute shambles yeah. I, I didn't really know who he was did you not know no so I'd always been sort of because m- my brother used to have a video on uh, England at the 1990 World Cup yeah. <laughs> and uh, I used to watch it when I was ill and that's how I got to know Sir Bobby Robson and Paul Gascoigne got a cake for his birthday and that's how <laughs> I, got... <laughs> I, I remember Gazza being um, they all stuck this big chocolate cake in his face and he Classic. was like oh I love chocolate me mm. uh, what a phenomenal footballer that Norberto Solano was another member of Bobby Robson's Newcastle side it was a good team because yeah. they had goals all the way through it but they it was were a solid terrible defence didn't they they were, they Who did they have at the back? They are given in goal. Sylvan Distan was at the back that year. <laughs> do you remember? I do. Well, I remember him playing. He was probably slow then. He probably got faster as he got older. Him. We smashed him 3 0 Anfield and the lights went out. <laughs> I don't remember that either. Did you not? <laughs> no. It was on a Monday. Yeah, night. yeah, the lights went out for about like five seconds. The old crowd was like, oh, yeah, yeah, the Kaiser curled on in from 20 yards. Yeah. Oh, it was class. Danny Murphy scored too. Well, yeah, carry on. Are you gonna ask a question? No. Well, they were in. They were in second at the end of the month. Well, uh, New Year's. Well, New Year's Day. Uh, oh, we'll f- what's up? I think we should finish on this because um, we're gonna have to start doing half seasons or stop um, bullshitting so much. But um, Leeds United went top of the league on New Year's Day, uh, playing against West Ham. Robbie Fowler scoring a lob 
uh, only days after he'd scored his first hat trick. Shout out to Robbie on his 93rd mention of the show. So, uh, yeah, Robbie, if you're listening, <laughs> we really like you. And Brad, Brad's played hard to get. Please come on, Robbie. Too. Come on and talk about a season that you're involved in. Yeah. If you'd like to do that. I you won't. might not get much out of me you've and Mark because we'll just be staring you've at been you in con- You've been in contact. You've had a conversation with uh, Mick Lemmer, one of our presenters before, on Twitter. <laughs> and, so. excuse me, he has met me. He has met, he's met the balding, he's just met the balding members of the group. Yes, well, you know, there we go. Make, make a wish. Part of the Make a Wish Foundation for Bald and <laughs> So Jeremy on, Kyle's Christmas presents. <laughs> on in the meeting, folks. But uh, no, it's been. Do you know what? I've uh, I've enjoyed this trip down memory lane. So what's what, what was your highlight of the ha- this half of that season then? Beating the Manx, beating the Manx twice because we beat him the Charity Shield. Beating the Ev at home. You're on a visa. Beating the league. It was away, wasn't it? Beating the ever way, <laughs> Joanna Lisa. Sorry. Um, yeah, Ma- mine, was, mine was mine uh, was the Morgan Freeman lookalike fan on the uh, Super Sunday <laughs> montage. <laughs> Big up yourself, the Sky Sports <laughs> montage man, for being the only man mentioned more than Robbie Fowler <laughs> on the first episode of Egg Olsen's Wellies. I, reckon, you- I reckon mine was probably Robbie Savage continuing to make an utter bell end of himself throughout the season. Just mm. as the season went on, he just appeared to be a bigger, bigger bell end. Yeah, because that was against the, the, the moment that you're on about was against Derby, isn't it? And then he ended up being their captain years later. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know if there was anything made of yeah, that. Yeah, he, he was going really over the top against Derby as well, wasn't he? He was like, you know, he was taking it. But it was great when Derby relegated them about, you know, we'll talk about them next. You know what's interesting just about the um, the, st- the start of this season? I said before, the Manx lost six games by November. Right? They were fifth. Yeah. They were fifth in December. They probably so look, the standard, probably the the same, standard, it's probably not the same now, though. They're, they're fourth now, and I reckon they've easily the lost six games. The standard of the league mustn't have been that high. Or, ev- or maybe it was higher. No, they was beating each other. But it's, it's, it I think well, it's very six. similar to this season. You had Arsenal yeah. who were run away with it, like Chelsea are now. Mm. And United have lost you know, five, six games this season and they're in a similar position. The thing was, Arsenal, there was never a run away this no, season. No, it was also you, within about five points. Well, as you said, Leeds went top, didn't they, on New Year's Day? Because so. we went top and we beat Chelsea in March. Well, we were top quite a while, weren't we? Yeah. But, um, yeah, there we go. Oh, I, st- well. I still stick by the fact if we'd have kept God... Yep. Won that, we would have won that league. We'll, uh, what a moment to finish we'll on. Play, we'll play out with another song that's synonymous with this. 